edition of Broadcast. We are so excited to welcome the first male to our Table Talk segment. Really? Yes, you yeah. are. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Daryl Johnson. <laughs> wow. So nice to meet you. I'm sorry about messing up um, the Daryl and the Dway thing. Do people call you Moose, like your family and your friends? Do they just refer to you as Moose? It, it still happens, but I mean, I don't look anything like I did when I played, so it, it's kind of strange. Is that how you got the name? Because you were just a beast? Well, it, it's a, a name that I got from Babe Loffenberg, who's the, uh, the sports anchor here at CBS well. 11. Yeah, and uh, at CBS. the time we were playing together, um, we would kind of split up and go into our individual groups, and the running backs, and, and Emmett was there at the time. Um, Everybody was a little bit smaller than me. Even my backups at my position weren't as tall as me. So uh, it's six foot two, two forty five, and then I think even the backup fullback was five ten, two forty. So wow. he just said, "You look like a moose walking in a field of deer." <laughs> as you go from from group to group. So how tall are you? Six two. Six two. I was. I don't and when know I met I you, I mean, your neck was huge. Yeah. And it's amazing to see how your body has transformed over the years since you stopped. Playing. You still look great. Thank you. Oh, you do. You look fantastic. Oh my God. No. Let me tell you. Before I could even get out of the makeup room, everybody's like, "He's so he's handsome. He's so handsome. You are so handsome. He's so good looking." I'm like, "Okay, I know his wife, Diane. Y'all, hands off. <laughs> hands off." You know, when you talk about like the, the big necks that yeah. football players um, sometimes have, and I have I have two sons that play football. Mm -hmm. One plays for SMU, and he's the transformation that's happened with him. He's um, he'll academically be a junior so sophomore with football in the couple years that he's been in the SMU program he's transformed his yes. body's yeah. transformed and I wonder if the importance about getting your neck stronger is to help from from head injuries absolutely it's yeah. one of the it's one of the things that plays a role in it there's a number of different things and that's that's going to be the tough the tough challenge moving forward is is how many different things can we bring into the arena of concussions but especially for the little guys the young kids mm -hmm. the head weight to neck strength ratio is one of the biggest factors because when they fall mm -hmm and they can't support their head, they get the whiplash right. motion. So it's definitely very important. The older you get, then you can start to develop it a little bit more. You know, we're gonna talk about that a lot more, I know, in the next segment. Yeah. Really quick, I wanna talk to you about, because, you know, obviously you played sports all of your life, and this new, this whole situation with the Rutgers um, yeah. basketball coach and how he, he treated the players, what's your thought about that? I thought once the video became public, I was surprised that there was any hesitation to not remove from his coach. Mm. Uh, I was actually glad to see as the uh, the athletic director kind of backpedaled a little bit that, that he stepped down because yes. he knew he was wrong as well. Mm. Um, you, you can't have that. And, and I tell people all the time, and, and it comes back to football, you know, should my son play football? And yeah. that's a decision that the parents have to make. But one of the things I tell them all the time, make sure he has good coaching. It's the most important thing, especially at a young age. I know so many kids growing up that were chased away from a sport because they had a bad coach when they were eight years old, it's, nine yeah, years old, 10 years old. They true. never came back to it because they always remember that guy. And here's a guy working with college age kids. Oh. And it's, it, when you go to Rutgers as a, as a recruited basketball player, right. you would think that at some point you were with your teammates and somebody would say, hey, you don't want to come here. Like our coach, guy, our coach is a knucklehead. But, right. Well, and I think the but flip Darryl, side of that, there's so many coaches that are so positive and so, and there can be an athlete that's maybe not that talented and a great coach can make them an incredible mm -hmm. athlete. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, I hate that because there are, I mean, I cheered all through high school and college and there were coaches that I had that were amazing and they would just push me, push me, but in such a positive way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's sad to see, to see that. So don't much you right. think though, like after, you know, going through college sports and professional sports, didn't you have coaches though that sort of like walk the line and how they would try to, you know, motivate or push the players? I was never involved with a coach uh, like Coach Rice at Rutgers um, or a Bobby Knight. I mean, he was the person during our era that, well, you know, Bobby threw chairs and he was very vocal yeah. and, and, you know, but I, I never saw any video of, of Bobby like, you know, belittling, mm -hmm. demeaning his players. Mm -hmm. um, every, every coach that I worked with uh, through my entire career, I was very fortunate. They were fantastic. Yeah, you uh, had a yeah. My Jim college Johnson. coach was great. Yeah, Joe Brodsky. Where'd you go to college? You know, Syracuse awesome. University. Okay. Uh, but, you know, Emmett and I shared Joe Brodsky together. He was a running back coach here. He was, you know, we, we, were, we were blessed. Joe, Joe was probably the <laughs> toughest one. I was going to say. But he Emmett's challenged okay. you, he but not stories. in a demeaning way. It was right. just, you know, he wanted you to be the best you possibly could be. And sometimes there is tough love in coaching. Right. But the guys who can present it in a way where it's not demeaning and it's not negative mm -hmm. are, are the best and I had one in college it was phenomenal. Have you um, coached any Little League? Yes. yes. He How is that? The Suns team. I what happens that. when all the other players' parents walk out and they're like, "Oh my God, did you see who the this coach is?" <laughs> like we're, we're, we're like, like we're no winning this season. Your team, yeah. <laughs> the opposing team's like, "Dang it, we don't stand a chance." I, I, at some point, I may write a book uh, about coaching your kids because it is, is quite possibly one of the most difficult things I've ever done. Yeah. Because for them to create the separation of dad and coach at that age, it, it's virtually impossible. 
they just see you as dad, and they talk to you as dad, and you know you have to get over. And even the friends yes, who yeah. know you and as yeah, the, I know. You their friends' dad. Yeah. And you're like, for the next hour and 15 minutes, right. I am coach. Right. I'm not dad. I'll be dad after practice. And it's got to be hard because probably the other players think that you're showing favoritism to your son. But then you're probably trying to treat him a little bit tougher so that it doesn't seem that way. Exactly. But if he just so happens to be more balance. talented, it's like, well, sorry, he gets to play more. But you know what? You see that a lot of the head coaches' sons are always like the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you wonder if it's favoritism or do they just have good they genes? They grew up with, well, and they probably grew up throwing a football around in the backyard. Right, and those exactly. Kids didn't get that. The greatest lesson I ever heard was it was from Charles Haley. and, and Charles Haley. Yeah, he's the best. He's the best. So now you've Please got have you've on the got show. Oh God, you put him at table talk and just leave him on for the whole, <laughs> the whole show. Charles Haley. But it was Charles and Russell and Tony Tolbert and they alternated and coached each other's sons. You know, I told them I said, "Yeah, I'm That's coaching smart. my son," and they're like, "You're co like, seriously, you're coaching that. your son?" Yeah. And they said, "No, I coach Tony's son. Tony coaches my son." And they just alternated. So that way. It's somebody else, That's a but good you point. you trust them and how they're going to present the message. You trust them and the fundamentals they're going to teach. Right. So I thought that that was a great idea. Oh, that is a good maybe idea. Maybe coach EJ. Absolutely. And let Emmett coach. Yeah, Emmett can Jay. coach Aiden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. When we come back, we will sit down with Daryl to talk about a very serious topic, something that you are um, very involved in, and that is brain injuries and the work being done to prevent them. So stick around for that. <laughs> Woo.